Hello friends, Eli here from Mystic Circuits. Today I am going to be showing you how to do some video stuff with our most recent module. And, uh, um, and it's pretty great for video because it give, takes either one or two inputs and then gives you six outputs based on those. So you can either use all six of them for two channels of RGB. You can use these as different uh, ramp processors, which are all based on the same ramp inputs, or um, you can use it to do a variety of other utility stuff if you need a, VGA, a VCA or a rectifier somewhere in there. So um, first I'll show you what I do for colorizing with Anna. I'll take one oscillator in from the prismatic ray, and then we can do min VCA and uh, step into the red, green, and blue channels on our visual cortex. You can see our oscillator is pretty faint on there, but if I start to move these around, you can get some nifty colors going on that will react both to the shape and frequency of our input. Now that's a little on the boring side. What happens if we put in two inputs? So we have a second oscillator going in here and uh, this oscillator is doing horizontal lines. So if I kind of mess with the levels, get something a little bit more interesting, especially you have these sharp corners here, so it's more or less turning on or off the oscillators. If we soften the corners, it gives you these weird kind of fish scale shapes. Like that. You can get some nice bending of the lines without actually doing any frequency modulation. And if we mess with the levels over here as well. see what I mean. Now you'll notice those blocks in the blue. That's all from step doing some sample and hold magic with our inputs, sort of deciding when to pass them along and when to uh, hold whatever was going on there in the first place. Um, again, these are two oscillators that are not being modulated at all, just a horizontal and a vertical line. Oh, that's real nice. Get a lot of cool stuff like that. Yeah, so interesting wave shapes from both of our inputs. Um, it's worth noting that you can get a fairly different response by using the sum inputs instead of the... Uh, attenuverter inputs and then just using the through zero VCA on the prismatic rays themselves in order to act a bit like attenuverters. So you can see here as we change the settings on Anna, we're changing all of the outputs so we get some cool colorized effects. So let's stick an LFO in there. Plug this LFO into Anna. And then uh, the amount that the LFO is going to affect the color is being determined by the input to attenuverter. You can see we're getting some cool like breathing effects. Now, of course, we have these other outputs that are sitting unused, so let's patch those into the second channel on the visual cortex. So we have max going to red, magnitude going to green, and box going to blue. And then when I uh, use the crossfader over here, we have a second set of uh, RGB data, 
all coming from Anna. And you can see it behaves quite differently. With box, it'll sort of give you um, these contours of where the two inputs overlap. Um, and with magnitude, you get this weird, that kind of high frequency uh, wiggling is all from magnitude as both of the inputs get close to zero. It'll sort of confuse it in a way. Um, take out the LFO. We can manually scroll through the possible settings. Something like that is uh, what Anna's really good at doing. Making these strange shapes from our inputs and then bending them. Um, yeah. Something like that. Get these nice soft, like, blooming shapes almost. And then, of course, Something that I do a lot when I'm doing visuals with this is that I'll set um, this to the middle and then cycle between them. So then you're getting two different sort of settings of RGB that are being cross-faded between. That's real nice. All right, let's try uh, maybe patching one of these ramps into here. Let's see, I believe we have a diamond coming in. So this is now changing how much the diamond is affecting the color. Maybe I'll turn off cycling for this. Let's go to one side. So you can see here, we're kind of removing the diamond here, there's no diamond in here, we're adding it. I guess you can't really see that. Basically just selecting how the diamond is affecting the color of our oscillators. Another nice thing to do is to maybe put both of them into vertical and then modulate one of the oscillators and leave the other one alone. So now got this oscillator being modulated by the diamond. And uh, this one just giving us straight vertical bars. change the vertical bars, sort of like displace the shape of the, the other oscillator. So you can see that rippling sort of right in the crevice. Yeah, let's try the other side. like a skull kind of yeah cool um, so I'm gonna go ahead and undo this patch to show you the other scenario I usually use Anna for and uh, you know my, my video setup isn't super extensive so I only have a couple different ways to kind of show what I do with Anna. Um, I'm sure someone with a larger system could possibly come up with some other ways to use it um, but I use it a lot to process ramps and something that I always wanted to do was to be able to automate the um, the sort of attenuverter for the frequency modulation input. And with Anna, you can do that. So you plug a ramp into N1, and then we take the VCA, plug it into the frequency modulation, turn that all the way up. Now, if 
we set it in um, the inputs have some gain so you'll see they sort of max out at a certain point just set it right there and then uh, if you modulate this you can get different directions that the modulation will go. So if you want to run an LFO in, now we have some uh, through zero multiplication of the uh, FM input, which I find quite useful. Um, we can also take a look at some of the other outputs. So here's the magnitude output actually gives you a kind of similar effect, except it goes only in the positive direction. Um, min and max may or may not do interesting things depending on what's going on, um, because sometimes it'll just give you your LFO, and then sometimes it'll give you the ramp, depending on which voltage is higher. Max, similar thing kind of bending the LFO, or rather bending the ramp sometimes when the LFO gets to be a high enough level. Um, step is fun just simply because of how glitchy it is. Um, sample and hold will give you some nice kind of curvature and weird uh, fuzziness right around the points where it's either sampling or not sampling. So if I run the oscillator, Two. Maybe we can get some cool shapes. Something like that. Getting something weird. And you can see that the sample and hold that's staying still in the middle is sort of acting like a random voltage generator for that section of lines that's in the center there. Yeah, get some weird, weird ramp shapes. Yeah. Yeah, make it slower. Yeah, so here we have a ramp where whenever we have a horizontal line coming into the second input, it's uh, causing the ramp to stay still. So we get those horizontal bars in addition to the uh, bendy lines that you would get with a ramp like this. Um, finally there's box which gives you a comparator output so um, obviously that means a lot of the time it's going to be either minimum or maximum modulation and you can still get some pretty nifty stuff out of it. That's the kind of stuff I like to make. The shape is moving. Along with the voltage. So you'll notice I have a, a second Anna down here. This was actually a prototype, but it's a little glitchier than the one that came out. Um, obviously, in most cases, that's a negative thing, uh, but I I kind of like it for the qu 
quality of video stuff that I do. So in a second channel inverse, it's not blinding. Yeah, you can see already how much dirtier than the signal is. But just to give you an example of a patch where we have Anna both doing things with the ramps and with the colors, this would be that patch. I guess the reason the green channel is coming from nowhere is because it's the sample and hold that's driving it, so it only pops up sometimes. And uh, yeah, there you go. I think that's a pretty thorough overview of using Anna for video. Um, if you end up figuring something else to do with it, uh, I would love to hear about it. And uh, thanks a lot for watching.